All right, next week we have UFC 278, Kamara Usman defending his title for a sixth time in Salt Lake City, Utah against Leon Rocky Edwards. Sixth title defense for uh, Kamara Usman. The man's got a record of 20 and 1 and he is sensational. He's known now potentially as the pound for pound number one fighter in the UFC, if not on planet Earth, let's be honest. Um, and it just got me thinking, the career of Kamara Usman, everything he has achieved, but what are his best performances? Of course, back in the day, he was known as a decision guy, okay? And even after the fights, he would say, look, listen, this was only me at 30%, but maybe it was only him at 30% because whatever's happened now, something has clicked. He's moved on, he's training with Trevor Whitman, and he's putting people away. He's beating people in absolute style. I'm very excited for next week, Salt Lake City. Leon Rocky Edwards, of course, I'm supporting him. He's a fellow Brit, but I'm friends with Kamara as well, so it's kind of like, May the best man win. Kamara Usman is a great striker, incredible wrestler, and just an all-round great athlete. Now, Leon Rocky Edwards, on the other hand, what a striker this guy is. The man is just a sniper inside there, perfect footwork, always on balance, pretty much a perfect striker. Still, anyway, we're not here to talk about that. I'm going to do a video on that next week, going to give you my full prediction. We are here today to talk about the top three performances that we have seen from Kamara Usman. Number three, Kamara Usman versus Colby Covington won at UFC 245, December 2019. This went down at the T-Mobile Arena and I was there with my family enjoying the night of fights and what a main event this was. Now going into this one, a lot of bad blood. Colby Covington, he likes to stir the pot, he likes to get under people's skins. He sells a fight very, very well. But Kamaru and Colby, they had a lot of history. They were going back and forth. Uh, Marty Fake Newsman is what Colby called him. He's always entertaining. You've got to love what Colby Covington brings to the table and what he brings to the octagon. Now first of all, the reason I picked this one, the first one, over the second one, well, it's because we got a stoppage. Now, Kamar Usman was known for being the takedown guy, the takedown artist, but we didn't really see this, that in this one. We didn't see any takedown attempts, really. We didn't see any submission attempts, really. And this proved that Colby Covington was a great striker as well, but Kamar Usman was a better one, right? Let me give you some stats. Usman landed 48% of 360 strikes thrown. Colby landed 36% of 395 punches attempted. So, this one proved, it dispelled the myth that Kamaru could not punch. In fact, he swelled up the face of Colby Covington. He knocked him down twice. And as I said, he finished him in the fifth round. And listen, let's be honest. This theory that Kamaru Usman can't punch, that is absolute bullshit anyway. He has scored 10 knockdowns in the UFC, more than Robbie Lawler and more than every other welterweight champion in UFC history. Now, when the stoppage came, which of course Colby Covington complained, he wasn't happy. And at the time of the stoppage in round five, this was a very, very close fight. The scores were 39 to 37 in favor of Kamaru, 37-39 for Colby Covington and 38-39. 38. So what does that tell you? That tells you that Kamara Usman knows when he's behind, knows when it's close, knows when it might be going to the judges and steps it up a gear and finishes the fight in emphatic style. What a fight that was. Number two, Kamara Usman versus Gilbert Burns at UFC 258 in February 2021. Now, if you know the history between these two, you know they were training partners for a very, very long time under Henry Hooft and what used to be called Sanford MMA in Florida. Now, listen, when you're two guys, you're in the same weight class, Kamara was the champion, Gilbert Burns was tearing through the division, you know at some point you're probably going to be on a collision course. Now, Sanford MMA is such a fantastic gym and Henry Hooft is a sensational coach. Some of the best fighters in the world down there and a lot of people on the mat. So that's a fantastic thing. But sometimes, and I've never trained in a situation like this, so I don't know, but this is what people say, is the same thing with American top teams. Sometimes they say that when you're there, when there's so many people on the mat, it's hard to get the one-on-one -on -one time that you needed. Now, of course, Gilbert and Kamaru, close friends. Kamaru knew that Gilbert was closing in, so Kamaru decided to walk away from the camp and he moved to Colorado, started training with Trevor Whitman, the coach of Rose Nami Yunus, amongst many, many others. Justin Gage is another one. Uh, started training with him and I'm telling you, he did a fantastic job. Henry Hoof was already doing a great job, but you know, the more people you train with, you take a little bit from there. You pick a little bit from him and all of a sudden, you're getting your own unique style. Trevor Whitman certainly improved 
improved the hands. And of course, at UFC 258, they did finally meet. Now, this one delivered. What an action-packed fight this was. Round one, Gilbert Burns went out there, got off to a tremendous start, sits down Kamara Usman, and everyone was like, oh my God, Gilbert is going to knock the champ out. But apparently, when they used to spar with one another at Sanford MMA, this is how the sparring sessions always went down. Apparently, Gilbert would often catch him. Kamaru would, you know, take a few shots and get troubled a little bit, but then he would persevere, he would turn the tides and obviously take over and dominate the sparring. And that's kind of what we saw throughout this fight. Round one, Gilbert looked sensational, almost finished. I was out of my seat, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. But then in round two, listen, that is when Kamaru Usman started to take over, started landing right hands, he was switching stances, he looked very, very good. He looked improved on the feet. Trevor Whitman, one of the best minds and one of the best coaches in the game, as I said, and you could see the influence that he was having. Round two, dropped him a couple of times and then in round three, it was a straight left, a straight right, switching stances, boom, sat him down, put Gilbert down on the canvas and Kamara was very careful. Of course, he's trained with Gilbert many times. He knows that not only can he bang, he's got some of the best jiu-jitsu in the world. So he stood over him and ground and pounded him from a range where Gilbert wasn't able to use any of his jiu-jitsu and of course, got the stoppage in round three. And yeah, at the end of the fight, they were both incredibly emotional. They embraced in each other's arms. They were both you know, sharing tears because it's emotional. You go out there, this is guys that are almost like, like a brother to you, you know, and you have to try and do damage to one another. It's a hard thing to do, but they are professionals. As I said, after the fight, there was a huge embrace. There was some tears shared, some emotional words, and it was a beautiful scene. Congratulations to both men. Number one, Kamara Usman's greatest performance of all time went down at UFC 261 Jacksonville, Florida, when he knocked out Jorge Gamebred Masvidal. Now, of course, this was a rematch of a fight that went down on Fire Island. Kamara Usman defended the title against Jorge Masvidal, and he dominated the fight. He was clearly the victor, but he didn't get a finish. It, there was a lot of wrestling. There was a lot of control. It was kind of a Kamara Usman throwback session. It was like the type of way that he used to fight. Now, the storyline going into that one for the fight on Fire Island was that Masvidal took the fight on short notice. And he did. That is the reality of the situation. Um, flew over to Fight Island on a private jet. I think it was a little over a week's notice, but he made way and he showed up and he went five rounds with the champ and he gave a very, very good account of himself. But for Kamara Usman, being a champ, being the competitor, being the fighter that he is, he didn't like the fact that Masvidal had a built-in excuse because he kind of did it today. Hey, listen, I took that fight on short notice. If I had a full training camp, I would have smoked your ass. If I had a full camp, I would have knocked you out. And obviously Kamara being the proud man that he is, the proud fighter, father, champion that he is, he took that personally. It was pissing him off, and he would do. I'm not surprised. Masvidal's a dangerous guy. Remember, he had this crazy resurgence in 2019, knocking out Darren Till, Ben Askren, and putting a beat down on Nate Diaz. So the rematch went down. As I said, UFC 261, a lot of tension, a lot of bad blood, and a lot of interest from the media and the fans. I was very much looking forward to this one. Now, coming into it, I'll be honest, I thought Kamara was going to do the same thing. He's going to take him down. He's going to control him. But that isn't what we saw. It was a relatively even first round. I think Kamara got the better of it. But in round two, at one minute, two seconds of the second round, we saw one of the best knockouts of the year. Now, I'll get to that in a second. But I think what was going on in the first fight, yes, Kamaru controlled Jorge Masvidal. There was a lot of wrestling. And I've been a victim of what I'm about to explain. Now, when you fight somebody that is a very dominant wrestler, when they're just trying to clinch, when they're trying to take you down, it makes you clam up. I talk about this a lot when I'm commentating. You do, because you're standing there, you're waiting. You think, if I throw a right hand, they're going to shoot underneath. They're going to grab a leg. They're going to clinch. So you're waiting for them to shoot. So you're waiting for them to shoot. Then all of a sudden, the son of a bitch throws a right hand or a left hook or a head kick, whatever the case may be, and you kind of freeze. Now, granted, that's my fault. That's Masvidal's fault. It's certainly not the fault of Kamara Usman, but that is the threat and the worry and the stress levels that a really talented wrestler brings to the table. So I think Masvidal was kind of waiting a little bit, but it doesn't matter because it was one huge, thunderous right hand that Kamaru threw, connected on the jaw of Masvidal. We've seen that picture. He was asleep straight away. There's a picture of his head being propped up on the shoulder of Kamara Usman, he hit the canvas, he went down, a couple more hammer fists, and that was that. That was all she wrote. There it is, there's my top three fights for Kamara Usman. Let me know what you think of this in the comments down there. All the best.